This charge involves a spherical charge here, that is a solid spherical charge, and it has a charge density of rho, which is actually a function of r, where that whole function is k times r, and where k is just some constant, and r, of course, is the radius from the center of our uh, from the center of the uh, the sphere. So the further that you go out, the more charge density uh, the charge density increases. So our goal is to find the electric field somewhere on the inside of this. So of course we're in the Gauss's law section, so we can begin with Gauss's law. One of the best ways to start, of course, is with the uh, integral form, which is the surface integral of the electric field captured by some sort of Gaussian surface. And that is, of course, equal and proportional to the charge that's enclosed with a proportionality factor of one over epsilon naught. So we'll just go ahead and start with our um, Gaussian surface, which is gonna we'll just do some sort of Gaussian surface captured here in the middle. It's gonna be a sphere. And of course we're using spherical coordinates because uh, it's a sphere. And uh, we'll go ahead and so since our uh, Gaussian surface is perfectly uh, symmetrical, all the normal vectors of the uh, the of the, the surface area of the Gaussian surface is in line with the electric field, which is always going to be point radial for a spherically symmetric charge. Right here, this whole dot product, of course, just becomes one, and it becomes a multiplication between these two magnitudes, where the uh, um, magnitude of the electric field, of course, is what we're solving for, and then the surface area of the um, of the uh, Gaussian surface is uh, 4 pi r, where r is a variable distance of where we're going to try to find the electric field at. And then, of course, we have our Q enclosed, which we'll get to later, and our proportionality constant, which is 1 over epsilon naught. So since we already have this in a nice algebraic form, let's go ahead and solve for our goal here, which is the electric field. We'll keep it in the magnitude field for now. And we'll go ahead and go 4 pi epsilon naught, since that is the uh, uh, a common, common factor, literally a common factor that we uh, go through these uh, problems. We do have a one over r squared as well, and we also have our uh, q enclosed. All right, so the next step is trying to find the q enclosed. It's not easy, as easy as what we had before um, because uh, we can't simply just multiply rho times v because again, rho is a function of r. Uh, so if we just did rho times v, we would just be finding the, uh, the uh, charge density at that specific uh, cross section, that sliver of, um, volume right there. So what we actually need to do, and this was kind of hinted at in the problem, is to uh, actually do an integral from zero to r, or actually over all space. So just do a full um, uh, volume integral of rho times d tau. And since we're working with spherical coordinates, our d tau, of course, it's going to be uh, uh, the spherical volume element. Uh, but just here's the thing, though, so we can't really use big R anymore, because uh, that typically just means the radius of the surface, and uh, R is taken, R prime is typically from the source to the, uh, from the coordinate axis to the source, so we're, we're just going to go with S, even though it's typically reserved for um, cylindrical coordinates, we're just going to put S as our, as our uh, radial variable distance, so I'll do S squared, usually it's just R squared sine theta, and we'll do DS instead of DR, d theta, d phi, right? And that's our volume element. If you're confused by that, you can just go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the first chapter for review or in the inside of the textbook, and it kind of does a pretty good review of that. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and do our uh, integrals. So our row, this is our row, which is KS. Again, I'm putting S right now instead of R because uh, we're doing the integral because we're actually going to be integrating from zero to R since R is actually the uh, the goal where we're going to try to find the electric field. S squared, S sine theta. I guess you could use DR, but it can get confusing. It's just best practice to find something else to use for that variable. So our D theta, which is going to be this integral, theta, uh, usually starts from one of the axis and sweeps around all the way to from zero to two pi. So that'll be two pi here. Um, or so that was phi. So then theta sweeps down from the vertical axis all the way down to here. And so from that's from uh, zero to pi here. Okay. So we'll go ahead and since this is, uh, there's no phi's and there's only a sine theta, we'll go ahead and uh, attack those first. 
or pi epsilon naught, 1 over r squared. Remember, r squared is uh, kind of viewed as a constant uh, towards the integrals right now. So, so the integral from for d phi here is just going to be a um, 2 pi minus 0. So we'll just put 2 pi. And now we're going to look at the integral for theta. Uh, so let's go ahead and write this out explicitly. So it's be a cosine, negative cosine of pi minus, and then uh, minus a negative cosine. So it'd be a positive cosine at 0. And then we finally have our um, radial integral here. So k, s, clump those together, the two uh, s terms here, the radial terms, uh, ds. All right, so let's go ahead and just make some. So a negative cosine pi is just a positive 1. A plus a cosine of 0 is just 1. And let's just go ahead and look at this integral over here. Place it over here. That's equal to k r to the fourth over 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and just put these down. And we'll go ahead and start canceling out terms, which is always a satisfying uh, process unless comes out to something that doesn't really make sense and then it's not super fun but it's all right so those two cosine terms just turn into a two we have our k r to the fourth over four all right let's start canceling out the terms so first of all this r squared cancel out, cancels out with this so it becomes an r squared on the top um, these turn into these two twos turn into a four so this four goes away and uh, I'll spare this pi because it's going to be slightly illuminating in a second. So we have a uh, 4 pi epsilon naught, again, a common factor that we have, times some constant k times um, pi r squared, which is exactly what we're solving for almost. That is the magnitude of the electric field. And just to be fully explicit, once we take the magnitude sides away, since we know this is a spherical shell, or sorry, spherical um, charge, a, sp a, sp a sphere with a charge density, we know it's always going to be pointing a radial. It's perfectly symmetric in the radial direction here. So we can say with uh, great confidence that it's going to be pointing in the r-hat direction over in regards to the spherical coordinates. So this is why I left the, uh, the pi here. So we have our normal pi, uh, 4 pi epsilon naught, times some constant, right? But then we have uh, pi r squared right here. So it's kind of interesting, the fact that the electric field is proportional to the cross-sectional um, circle. So this, of course, is a, a spherical Gaussian surface, but if we just were to take a perfect slice of that right in the middle, we'd see and look down at it, you'd see like a perfect circle here. And the electric field, which points in the r-hat direction, of course, is uh, directly proportional to the area of that um, of that, of that circle that that spherical slice makes. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, thing to note and uh, it's it's going to be important to use as we move forward.